100.3 WRMB is the Quincy Harris Morning Show with K Fox. In the studio right now, we have a young gentleman. Sometimes you hear about cases of people uh, defending themselves or, you know, being their own lawyer, you know, when they're fighting cases. It's like, yo, yeah. why would you do that? Right, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times you see that, you're like, oh, this person's not going to win. Mm -hmm. uh, 2006, there was a murder in West Philly. Uh, it was a young gentleman who was, uh, you know, convicted of this murder. And he was recently uh, fought his case. He represented himself, yeah. and he beat the. Not, I'm not gonna say beat the case because beat the case seems as if he did it as, as if he right. did it. He won, right. and he is in studio right now. We have Hassan Bennett. Yes, sir. So when did you? Uh, when were you released from jail? Monday. Wow. So just a couple days. Yeah, just a couple days ago. Man, and you were, you were in jail for 13 years. Almost. You could say 13. I was in jail for. 4,615 days. Wow. That sound like rent. You remember? <laughs> and we're not trying to make light of it. But man, so tell us about what happened. What put you in jail? And, and you know, just tell us the whole process. Well, I was in the house. I was on the phone. I was on the phone with my friend Jazz. And we heard shots from around the corner. And I was supposed to go to Jazz's house. I was talking. We was talking about preparing a fashion show and all these other things, life in general. And, I, and she wanted me to come around her house and sit on the porch. And when I heard the shots, I'm like, I'm going around there. I'm going to go check on my homies. I got to check on my boys. And she's like, No, what are you going around there for? They're grown. They can they, they can take care of themselves. I'm like, I'm going around there. So I made a couple. I made calls and nobody answered my phone except for one person, the little chick. So I'm like, Yo, I'm going around there. So when I go around there, you know, I was I was known in the neighborhood. I was doing the music things. I was I was a block boy. I was known in the neighborhood. So the cop stopped me. And he asked me questions, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know nothing. Yeah. I just came around here. You know, you know Lamont. You know Lamont. Yeah, I know Lamont. I know like twelve Lamonts. So I ain't, leave me alone. And yeah. this guy, this cop, had always been. Every, he's one of the cops that stop me every time he see me. So when I when he approached me, I don't even want to deal with you. Yeah. I don't. But we sit out there, and I'm trying to observe what happened. And three days after that, the victim that it, it got shot in the case, he called me, and he said the cops was looking for you. So at first I'm like, hey, so what? Screw him. He's like, no, like this guy named Mont. He said you did it. I'm like, what? He said, and the detectives, like, they're they're on you. Like, they, they were saying, before he even came down there, they were saying, you, you, you. I'm like, what? So what's going on? He like, I know you didn't do it, but just, they coming. And they end up locking me up. Later on that night, I was waiting for the wire to come on. It was a Monday morning. I was about to eat chicken and dumplings that night. And you were living the wire. <laughs> but in hindsight, I'm listening to your story. The person's house that you were at, they said, don't go around there. Do you wish no, you would have... No, I was on the phone with her. Okay. And she said, don't go around there. Right. So do you wish that you would have listened to her? Because now cause now you're in that position. You're on the scene. Yeah, but that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, and I talked to her like, that's not who I am. I'm not going to... If I, if I see my friends, if I think my friends is in danger to turn my back to the other way on them, I'm not going to be a friend. Yeah. Now, were you one of the, the first people on the scene uh, after no, the shooting? No, I wasn't the first be person on the scene. I didn't arrive to the scene till like, almost a half an hour after the shooting. Wow, so they're, they're saying, or I guess the, the, the prosecution was saying, you you sh shot these guys. And then came back around. And then came back around and act like, hey, what's going on here? Yeah, that's what, basically what they were saying. Did they have evidence? Like, they had statements. They had statements from... Who, who ended up being, they had statements from this guy, Lamont. He had one statement from him, and he had a statement from the victim in the case. Now, both of them were just witnesses at first. But then the victim of the case, he called me, and then after he called me, he gets locked. At, well, hold on, let's read. He writes me a letter saying, I know you didn't do it. Wow. So they were rocking. They, then the guy, Lamont, later on, they found out that he's the actual guy Evidence showed that he's the actual perpetrator. So in them locking him up, he confesses, but he keeps me involved in it. He said, yo, he was the second shooter. He gassed me up. He basically said I forced him to do it. Really? Yeah. So 
as the case evolved, the victim comes to court and he said, I didn't make no statement. The police was, uh, the detectives was telling me he did it. The detectives told me, Lamont was saying his name. This was what the detectives was telling me. I didn't tell, I, and he. That's horrible. And he testifies that, that, he testifies to who actually did it. He says Lamont and Booz did it. That's what he says. So they're like, ah, he, he's lying because of the street code, no snitching. Well, that's snitching. You naming who did it, that's snitching. <laughs> yeah. But they're trying to color it. They were able to color it to a jury that snitching was only if you tell on me in court. Was there any bad blood between you guys for them to try to pin this on you? Well, they said it was bad blood between me and Le and, and the co-defendant, Lamont Dade. So, the second trial, I got a hung jury the first trial. Okay. I mean, not a hung jury, a mistrial, because one of the... One of the jurors' neighbors told her, listen, the guy y'all got on trial, he didn't do it. Oh, and man. she went to the judge. They had a mistrial. So the second trial, I go back now, my co-defendant agreed to testify against me. So when he testified against me, I was sentenced to life. Mm. I was sentenced to life in prison. I was convicted and sentenced to life in prison. How did you keep your sanity the last 13 years of your life, fighting for your life, being in jail, people saying that you did this? Dedicated. Dedicated to getting out of jail. Dedicated. At, for, at, at first, when I got life, it was like... It was like... What year was that? 2008. Okay. December 22nd, 2008. December 24th, 2008, I was sent upstate. I took the ride on what's called the Grape Goose. That's the bus ride to a state facility. I went through all the process. And it's like, I remember going through the process, but it was like... I wasn't me. I'm living outside of my body. My body's moving. Uh, you ever watch The Walking Dead? I yeah. was a walker. Okay. I was a walker. It was like, I'm just here. And I had to regain who I am. I had to re. I had to find strength in myself to like, no, we're going to beat this. Man. We're going to beat this. It was a guy, it was a guy from, named Prince, right? He, uh, he's Supreme's nephew. From Supreme from New York. Yeah, yeah, he's Supreme's nephew. And he says, I wasn't going I had stopped going to the law library for like six months. He's like, yo, you gonna just let him take your life? Yo, get back in the law library. What's wrong with you? Yo, you we you a fighter. Get back in the law library. What's up with you? I'm like, Yeah, you know what? You're right. And then two thousand and two thousand and ten, well, at the beginning of two thousand and ten I stopped going to the law library, so it had to be like June two thousand and ten, I hopped back in there. I just was trying to get every bit of knowledge. I How could. many books did you read? <laughs> I didn't even count. It was a lot, though. I didn't even count it. It was a lot of books. It was more so a lot of case laws. A lot of like case laws when the the superior and the Supreme Court render a decision. This is the decision we made on this case. This is why. This is the facts of the case. So I would read case law after case law after case law. I would read books on law. I would read Mumia's book, uh, 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 We Want Freedom. I read Mumia's book about uh, 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 the jailhouse lawyer's handbook. I read Michelle Alexander's um, the, the, the New Jim Crow. I read everything I can get my hands on. So the third time around, you represented yourself. Yes. And you won. No. The third I got time, a hung jury. You got a hung jury. 11 to 1. Okay. So 11, 11 was in favor of not guilty. One was like, no, nah, he's guilty. Wow. Yeah. So then then what happened? I had to go to a new trial. I so had, you, you, you did this four times? Yeah, I went to trial four times. Two I represent, well, I went to trial four times. In between the trials, after getting found guilty, I had an evidentiary hearing. My first evidentiary hearing, I was denied. I was ready to get, I had a second, I, I went through the appeal process. You have to go to the basic state appeal process. It's called direct appeal. After direct appeal, you file what's known as a PCRA petition. Once you file a PCRA petition, the lawyer will be appointed to your case. I had a lawyer appointed to the case in February 2012. At this time, I had a strong hold on the law. But I still was for, foreshadowed. I still was clouded by the by the the notion that you need a lawyer. They're, they're not going to let you win without a lawyer. The myth, 
That was on me. Like, you can't do it yourself. You need a yeah. lawyer. So just, just tell him what to do and he'll do it. And he sat on my case for almost three years. Mm. In the meantime, you're still just sitting in jail. I'm just yeah. sitting in jail. But at the, I'm still reading. Okay. So I'm, I'm sharpening my blade. What? I'm learning how to write petitions myself. I'm learning how to do legal writing. I'm, I'm, I'm still going. I'm learning business. I'm doing all types of things while waiting to, to the dog to be, hold on. I'm just wasting time. Y'all want him off my case. So I get it. I try to get him off my case. We have an evidentiary hearing. He convinced me that he's going to listen to me. Like, I'll listen to you. But I said, how about you just take standby counsel? Like, I'm no standby counsel. And what, what, tell us what standby counsel means. Standby counsel means he'll sit beside you and while, and just guide you through it. Okay. But he like, I'm not doing that. His name is Earl G. Kaufman. I'm not doing that. <laughs> so then he says, um, all right, I'm rocking with you. If you're going to do what I say, I'm rocking you. So he files a second petition. And this thing is jacked up. Mm. See, when I look at petitions, I'm looking at it through the eyes of the prosecution. How would I deny this? So mm. if I know I'm denying it, I, if I could see why I deny it, I'm like, yeah, I, I would whoop him on so this. So he was setting you up? Not I don't think no he was setting work. me up. I yeah. just don't think he was doing I think he was taking the easy way out. Yeah. It was just a check to him. Because he was free. Yeah, you free. You don't got to worry So I'm writing the court, and they say, no, we've decided you can't represent yourself. We've decided that you, he must stay on it at the last hearing. So I said, okay, I keep him on it. So, so he sent me the, he sent me a letter with the prosecution's motion to dismiss. This is the this is their petition to the court, asking the court to deny your petition. And then uh, we, he wrote me a letter with it. He said, yeah, this is the prosecution's motion to dismiss. Also, the judge said she's going to dismiss your position. So I wrote the judge every day. Oh, wow. I wrote a motion. I wrote either sent a motion or wrote the judge every day until they granted me what's known as a, a grazier hearing. How long did that take? A month. So you okay? So you were on it, and they were like, "Listen, basically, stop writing this. We're gonna give you a grazier hearing to decide if you can represent yourself." And in the grazier hearing, I went head up with it's the prosecutor, it's me, it's the judge, and it's lawyer at the time, Man. Mr. Kaufman. So, so how did you finally prove your innocence? I was able to get, I uh, petitioned the courts while on post collect Right after the Grazier hearing, I was allowed to represent myself. Then I got a private investigator. And I told him, like, this may be here, this may be here, this may be here. And he went out and obtained all the evidence that I didn't have. I had had a private investigator before that time, and he se secured two witnesses. My new private investigator had secured two witnesses, the criminal history of every witness. Okay. I had my phone records, and everything that the witnesses were saying were corroborated with my phone records. Everything was consistent. Man, so, so you, you do this, you do all the research. Was there one certain case that you said to yourself, "This sounds like me," and they got off, or this, this right here? That's the funny thing. Yeah. It was a case that they didn't get off. Oh wow. They got a new trial and then the Supreme Court, I mean the Superior Court took it back. But it was the reason they took it back because this guy they the reason they got a new trial was because a witness had said the guy didn't do it and they withheld a letter that the witness had wrote, right? And they 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 granted him a new trial, but then the Superior Court said, "No, that's he's a friend of the defendant. He still has a reason to lie. It's all I, we're denying that new trial." So when I looked at it, I said, "Oh, the victim in my case had been locked up. After I got locked up, the victim in my case had been locked up for four guns. People had told on him two statements against him, saying that he was attempting to retaliate from the shooting." He was going after the guy that shot him. They had saw him earlier that day. Now, the prosecution withheld that. We're not going to give you this because we're going to argue that he's lying when he says you didn't do it. Under the street code, stop snitching. Mm -hmm. So they didn't give me that. But, you know, jails talk. I found out. I petitioned the court to get that. And they eventually give it to me. So, man, we've been talking. You, so you, you won. Yes. When when did the final verdict come down for you? The final verdict, Monday. This Monday. Monday, the judge gave his, we came in court, the judge gave his instructions. I objected to a couple of instructions he gave. He gave his instructions. He sent the jury back in for deliberations. An hour and 21 minutes after they sent the jury back, the jury had came out with the not guilty verdict. How long was the trial? Whew. 11 days. 
and you and you won. So because now you have all of this knowledge, right? You know, are you? I have an obligation to share. Okay, so are you? Are, is it? Are you legally? Are you possible to possible for you to become a lawyer? I have to. I still have to get the accredited co courses to take the bar. Okay. I, I can't just go in. It's not like a driver's license where I can just go in and take the permit. No, I still have to take the accredited courses and you then to to take the bar. Yeah, so get an internship. Yeah, so is this going to happen? Like, what's, what are yeah, your, your I'm, next I'm, steps? Uh, Benjamin Cooper. He's going to guide me through it to okay. to to obtain it, uh, passing the bar to be to have Esquire after my name. Wow, what do you have to say to the family that feel like you're still guilty? I think that they should. I, me and their, me and Devin, we were close. We are close. I do not want to disrespect the family. I do not want to. I do not disrespect. I, I have nothing but respect for the family. Okay. But I think they're ignoring the evidence. They're doing exactly what the prosecution wants them to do. They have to understand that to the prosecution, this is not. This is a job. This is an employment. It's about okay. I have to come. It's my record. I have to come, and it's wins and losses. So I'll. The, the story I paint to you is the same story I'm going to paint to the juror. You see, talking to them is practice for when they talk to the jury. So when you say, oh, we believe the statement, I understand you're going through pain. I understand it. I understand all that. But you have to pay attention to the evidence. It's, it doesn't make sense for a person to be on the phone with one hand and shooting with the other hand. And the person on the phone can still hear the per my voice clearly. It doesn't make sense. Man. But they're ignoring that because they're thinking out of emotion, and I have no problem with it. I understand you're going through pain. I understand you're hurt. We all hurt. This, this death destroyed the neighborhood. Destroyed the neighborhood. Everyone was close before this. Once he died, everything cracked apart. Now the sets or, or blocks or street corners they used to hang with each other, now they are no longer associate with, associated with each other. It's an unwritten, a unwritten code. Uh, we don't like them guys. Mm. We can't trust them guys because of this death. This death not only destroyed that family, this death destroyed the whole neighborhood because this boy was loved. Now people keep saying uh, he's strong for going up against the prosecution. But truth be told, dealing with death, period, you got to be strong. We've become too immune to death. We talk about death as if it's like, oh, he went to the, uh, he went to his, what's, the, what's it called, when, when, when the eighth grade graduation, eighth grade graduation. Every, like everybody goes through it. We talk about and it, it, uh, a year later, it'd be like we don't even, yeah. we don't even care about it no more. I just want to switch gears for a second. Um, you were locked up for 13 years. Almost. Almost 13 years. You got out Monday. Yeah. So what's the first thing you do? What did you eat? Where'd you go? You're out. You're free. What'd you do? He's like, I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> yeah, like, I hug everybody. As you should. Mm -hmm. I, stay, I, I stay around for about a good 45 minutes. And I disappear. We had a smile. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, he disappeared into what? <laughs> I don't think I can say that here. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get up for Hassan, baby. Yeah, thank Listen, you. It sounds like a movie. Right. It sounds like a Everyone movie. Everyone says it. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. I used to listen to, me to bounce. Yeah, I used to listen to y'all early in the morning. Well, you can still listen to us, yeah, bro. I just want you to know that. Yeah, don't stop listening. Don't stop. Yeah, man, like, we, 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 we would like that. One more time, man. Let's get up our time, man. Yeah. Thank, you for thank, thank you for being the motivation. You're an example for everybody out here. If you, you, we like, we need to see more people of you, uh, like us, and from our backgrounds, calm up. I watch you come from nine nine. When I left, you was in nine nine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now you got you here. You got your own show. You got your own TV show. And I just want to thank, say thank you because you're a testimony that with hard work and dedication, I can bounce from Cali to back. Yeah. My dawn so. Yeah. so. I want come on, man. No, brother. Come Much on. love, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right.